Hello and welcome to the pier. Welcome to our online service for the week of September 11th. I'm so glad to be together like this. And if you're new, my name's Jason. I'm the lead pastor here. A warm welcome to you. A warm welcome to everyone who's watching. Well, today we've got a special service in store. It's our family service. And if you've seen one of these before, you know that we've got a time where we sing some songs that we know kids love. I know this because I've tested them out on my own kids. And also we have a Jesus story for you today. Today's story is called the parable of the sower. There's also a further time of worship and I'm gonna offer a reflection on our Jesus story to finish us off. And we'll have some time to pray as well. So that's what you can expect today from our service. Before we get started, I just want to give you some announcements, some things that are going on in our community. First off, one of the things that's coming up, we've got a special event coming up. It's actually this week on Wednesday, September the 14th. It's gonna be at 7.30 at the pier. A close friend of ours, someone who's really near and dear to us named Nancy, she's going to be coming to share with us. She's gonna be sharing stories and, and thoughts about God from her own experience. And the theme here is that she would help us to see who God is, and the hope that we have. So we invite you to that this Wednesday here at the pier at 7.30 p.m. That's a, an evening for women. Also, we've got uh, divorce care coming up. This is something that we've talked about before. This is a really important group, a really significant group that, that meets weekly. It's led by a couple in our church, Keith and Sherry. They've been leading these groups for quite a long time now, so they've got a lot of great experience to bring to the table. This is renewed material, new material that's coming out through divorce care. And so that's going to be starting on September 19th. And you can email Sherry P at kojikoga.ca. Her email is, is, is on the screen for you. And to find out more about that, and if that's something that you need, please sign up. It's going to be at the pier um, on, on Monday nights. But also if there's someone that you know that would benefit from this, please extend the invitation. Let them know about it as well. The last thing I want to mention is that our youth group is starting up. It's going to be starting up this uh, Tuesday at the pier. So that's Tuesday, September 13th. And it's going to be going on from, from Tuesdays from that point on. We've got a lot of great things in store this year in October. We're also going to be um, meeting in different locations, doing different things, depending on the part of the month. So we've got a lot of fun things in store, a lot of variety. So if you're in high school or know somebody who is, we would love for you to join us. So that's youth starting this Tuesday, September 13th. So those, those are some things that are going on. If you want to check those things out further, you can always email us at info at the .church. We always post these things on our Facebook or Instagram page. And also they're posted in our weekly email that goes out. And if you'd like to subscribe to that, send us, drop us a line. We'll make sure that you get subscribed to that. So you're always in the know about things that are happening. Great, so that's a bit of what's up. Now we're ready to start our service. We're gonna move into the kids portion. So if you've got kids around, invite them up, bring them, bring them to the TV, get ready to dance, get ready to sing along. We're gonna sing some songs together in just a moment. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the opportunity to praise you, to thank you, to pray to you, and to hear from you. We just pray that you bless our time together. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time as a community to worship you, to hear from you, to read your word and scripture and all of that, Lord God. We thank you that you're with us. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you to move and to teach and to guide us. We pray you bless our time. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start out with a song. And this is a, one of my favorites. It's one of my kids' favorites. It's called My Lighthouse. So we invite you to turn up the volume and sing along. Here we go. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failure, you won't walk out. 
Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In my silence, you won't let go. With each question, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Here we go. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Oh, oh, oh. Fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, oh, That was a really fun time for you. And now I'm excited to share a Jesus story with you. The story today is called the parable of the sower or the farmer. And I wonder if you knew this. Did you know that Jesus himself liked to tell stories? It's true. He, he told people stories or what are called parables because he was hoping to get people curious, you know, hoping to get people interested in what he was talking about quite often, which was the kingdom of God. He, he wanted to get people interested. And even, you know what, he wanted to shock people sometimes to get them outside of their comfort zone in the hopes that they might open up their hearts to, to himself, to, to Jesus himself, and also to his message about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Well, today we're going to hear one of those stories. And as we learn from Matthew, it turns out that Jesus told this story um, from the water, actually. Yeah, as the story goes, he was with a whole bunch of people at a beach. And so what he did was he got into a little boat that was on the seashore and he pushed out. He went out into the water a little ways, probably threw down a anchor. Um, I'm assuming that it was a calm day and he started speaking to the people. 
I wonder what beach comes to mind for you. For me, it's St. Lawrence Beach here in town. I, I imagine Jesus talking from there. Well, he starts off and he, and he says this to people. He, he says, everybody, listen up. What he was about to say was really important. And then he tells a story. He, he told everybody a story. He said, a certain sower or a certain farmer took some seed and started scattering the seed. You see, the farmer was going to plant a new crop of seed. I wonder what kind of seed comes to mind for you. What kind of seed would you prefer it to be? I have in mind that he's planting tomatoes or maybe grapes. Those are two things that I really like. You go ahead and choose whatever you want. But that the story is about this farmer who's planting the seed. And what the farmer does is he takes the seed and he's walking down the, the row and he's scattering the seed in all sorts of different directions. He, he's not just scattering it into the, the spot where you'd expect. He's kind of throwing it everywhere. He's being quite generous with it. He's not being stingy at all. And then as the story goes, some of the seed, it didn't wind up in the right places. Some of the seed, it landed on the hard path. You see, the farmer was walking along a, a path that was following along the row. And so it was really walked on quite a lot. So it was hard, compact dirt. So naturally, the seeds that fell on that path, they didn't sink in. And the birds looking for a snack, they came and they snatched it up. Well, some of the other seed, it fell into the soil, but it fell into soil that had a whole bunch of rocks and pebbles in it. So the trouble with that was there wasn't really a lot of soil for the seed, for the roots of the seed. You know how seed, when it starts to grow, it starts to put down roots. That roots, they're really important. There wasn't enough space for those though. So the roots didn't go down too far. And it turned out that over time, when the hot sun came out, that those the, the plants that were growing from those seeds, they burned up, they withered up, and they died. But then there was another group of, of seeds that, that went out, and, and they went out into soil, but this time it was soil that had a whole bunch of weeds in it. You know what weeds are. I wonder if your parents are into gardening. Maybe if you've helped your parents before, plant some flowers or that sort of thing. Well, you'll know then that your parents spend a lot of time making sure that there's no weeds. Because the thing about weeds is if they grow up around what you're trying to plant, they choke out your plants. So what that means is they take away the, the nutrients, the food, the water, the sunshine. And so if a whole bunch of weeds grow up around the good stuff, then they choke out the good stuff. They can't grow, they can't flourish, and they end up dying. That was what happened to another group of seeds. But then the, some of the seeds fell in the good stuff, that fell into the good soil. And as Jesus tells the story, that seed, it flourished, it grew up and produced a great harvest, a great harvest of tomatoes, a great harvest of grapes, whatever you chose. Well, that was the story. And he says to everybody after he's done, are you listening? Are you really listening? In other words, Jesus wasn't just telling this story because he knew people were interested in farming and he wanted people to know how to plant some good seeds and all of that. No, this story had kind of a hidden meaning to it. It was about something. It was about something deeper. Uh, it was, Jesus was trying to teach them about God and about God's kingdom through that story. That might be a head scratcher for you. You might wonder, how does that work? Well, so were his disciples. Jesus looked around and realized that his disciples weren't quite getting it. They didn't realize that there was a deeper meaning going on. So he pulled them aside and said to them, okay, I want to help you understand this. So he started explaining the story to them, explaining what the story really meant. And he said to them that that sower, that farmer, well, that's him. That's, that's God telling people, the good news of the kingdom, because the seed that's being thrown around, that's like Jesus telling people about the kingdom. Jesus' words were the seeds that were going out, and Jesus' words about the kingdom, the, the kingdom of God, you know, the kingdom of God, which is all about love and peace and joy, that it's, it's happening. 
in and through Jesus, the kingdom of God is coming and it's changing everybody's lives for those who are willing to accept that Jesus is indeed Lord, is king of that kingdom and are willing to follow Jesus and his ways. In that way, the kingdom's coming. So the seeds that are going out, that's Jesus speaking the words about the kingdom. And the different types of soil and the results, that's people. That's the different ways that people react to Jesus's words. So the, the, the path, the, the, the hard packed ground where some of the seeds landed, Jesus said, that's people who hear what I'm saying and they reject it. They hear Jesus's words about the kingdom and instead of being happy about it and saying, yeah, I, I want to follow you, Jesus. They say, wait, you're a king? of God's kingdom? No, no. I, I don't want anything to do with that. I, and they reject Jesus. And so it said, Jesus says, the evil one comes and snatches away the words that Jesus gave them. And then the, the, gra- the ground that's the, you know, the soil with the rocks in it, where the, the seeds, they can only grow a little bit. And then the hot sun, you know, um, the hot sun scorched them because they couldn't put down roots. He said, those are people that hear the word and are excited at first. They think, oh, cool. God's kingdom is coming and it's in you, Jesus. Okay, I want to follow you. And they're all enthusiastic. They're all excited. They're following Jesus until something hard comes along. Something really tough in their life comes along and they quit. They can't go any further. They can't persevere. He says, that soil is those people. And then there's the soil that had a whole bunch of weeds in it. Jesus says, that stands for people who hear my words and accept them for a time. So they're excited. They follow Jesus for a time. But then things like the love of money and, you know, worry about possessions and how am I going to, you know, make enough money and all that stuff. That comes in and it, it crowds out the joy of following Jesus. Because following Jesus needs to be a wholehearted thing. And that stuff comes and competes with that. And it kind of chokes it out. It chokes out the perseverance and the enthusiasm and those people give up. But then there's that soil that, pro- that was good soil that produced a harvest. Jesus said, those are people whose hearts are ready and open fully to the kingdom. And so they receive understanding and change and they just follow Jesus and they persevere. That's how he explained the parable to his disciples. And maybe that's clicking for you. Maybe you're understanding that. Maybe it's a little bit confusing. If it is, why not talk to your mom and dad about it? I'm sure they'll be able to help you understand this a little bit more. But the whole point of it is for us to ask ourselves, what, how do I feel about Jesus's Um, about what Jesus says about the kingdom. How do I feel about Jesus? Am I excited to follow him? Do I want to persevere? Do I want to be like that soil that produced a big harvest? And if that's you, then it just takes a simple prayer to Jesus to say, please, Lord Jesus, help me to do that. I want to learn how to follow you and how to be changed by you. Well, That's the story that Jesus told, and that's the explanation he gave to his disciples. And you can be sure that that was a day that they'd never forget. Thanks for listening. Come, let's worship our King. Come, let's bow at His feet. He has done great things. See how His love overcomes. See what our Savior has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and 
and alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God, you have done great things You've been faithful through every storm You'll be faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Oh, here we you conquered the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh God, you have done great things We dance in your freedom Awake and alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God, you have done great things Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do great things. I just want to sing that bridge one more time together. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Let's sing that one more time. I love that reminder. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah. God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Two. the battle you see my victory when all I see is a mountain you see a mountain move and as I walk through the shadow your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I'm safe with you when I fight. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle. 
shadow belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night For me, who can be against me? My Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. And all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is the cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I'll lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Shine in the shadows, win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Pray, 
can God come and turn this thing around? God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around All of my hope, all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus A breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus now Let's sing that again All of my hope is in the name the name of Jesus. God, turn it around. 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 Oh. He's up to something. He's up to something God is doing something Right now He's up to something He's up to something God is doing something Right now He's healing someone He's saving someone God is doing something Right now He's healing someone He's saving someone, God is doing something oh, Right now, He's moving mountains Making a way for someone, God is doing something oh, Right now, He's moving mountains Making a way for someone, God is doing something And all of my hope is in the name the name of Jesus Breakthrough will come Come in the name The name of Jesus And all of my hope Lies in the name The name of Jesus Breakthrough will come Come in the name God turn it around, 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 God turn it around. Dear Heavenly Father, we just um, thank you for those words. Thank you for that song. And we just trust in you, Lord God. And if, if you're at a place today where those words have special meaning, where you're waiting for God to, to turn things around as we've been singing, we just want to pray with those here who are going through that, Lord. We pray together as a community, as a family, for those people who need to see change happen. We pray, Lord God, that your will would be done, that your kingdom would come in their lives. Lord God, you know what we need, and that's where you call us to trust. And sometimes things don't turn out the way that we expected or maybe even wanted. But Lord God, we know that you're with us through it, and you will turn it around. You will turn it around. It's into The thing is, maybe the better words is you'll make it into something new. Lord God, you'll bring life out of that space of, of death. you bring health and spiritual growth even. And we thank you for those times when you've done that, when we look back to, to know that you've done great things as we've been praying. 
and that you'll do it again. We can trust from, from what you've done in the past for us, knowing and what you've done in the lives of our brothers and sisters when we've celebrated, knowing that you're always up to something. If we have breath in our lungs, you're still up to something. <laughs> you're doing something even right now, Lord God. Each moment, moment by moment, your spirit is working. I just want to give everyone here the, the chance to, to pray. Whatever you need to pray. And maybe we'll sing that bridge one more time as a, as a way of encouragement. But feel free to sing or feel free to pray whatever the Spirit's nudging you to do this morning. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something. Right now, He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something. Right now, He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something. Right now, He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something. Right now, He is moving mountains. Making a way for someone God is doing something Right now He's moving mountains Making a way for someone God is doing something Right now Ooh. We sing these songs of trust to you, Lord you to thank God for all the good things in your life right now, out loud or, or to yourself. bless our time now as we dig into scripture and we come together trusting that you're going to speak to us. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray all of these things and sing all of these songs too. Amen. Well, I hope that that time of worship was a blessing for you. And to follow it up, I would like to now take a bit of time to reflect on the parable that we heard earlier today, that parable of the sower. And to start off, I wonder if you know kind of the purpose of parables, the reason why Jesus spoke so often in parables. I mean, that's kind of fascinating in, it, in itself. Jesus had the opportunity to speak to a lot of people and he chose to tell parables. He chose to tell these kinds of stories. He tells us why actually in Matthew 13. He says that he's telling people because he's trying to nudge them toward a welcome awakening. He's trying to create readiness. The, these parables are designed to help motivate people, uh, to get people thinking, to create like a curiosity in them. And he's willing to use even like provocative, controversial ways. He's even sometimes these stories will, will shock people. Out. It will shock them out of thinking a certain way and get them wondering, oh, wait a minute, what, that's happening, you know? Or it's also these stories kind of create a curiosity and a desire, and they motivate in that way. Let me put it this way. I'm sure you know the difference between, you know, you imagine a subject that you're taking at school, and there's a huge difference between a teacher that is kind of just going by the book and another teacher who's really passionate, who knows how to motivate their students. 
I can think back to learning ancient Greek, actually, to give a good example of this. In my undergrad, I had the opportunity to learn ancient Greek and I actually took two years of it, which four semesters of it, lots of it. And the first year, I had one teacher for the whole year. The second year, I had a different teacher. That first year, the teacher, they did a fine job, you know, and they were definitely competent. They knew their stuff. But it was just kind of by the book. They kind of just went through the textbook and we did the assignments. And I think really the only reason I got through it was because I was pretty self-motivated. But the second year, we had a totally different teacher. That teacher, he was excited about ancient Greek. Like he was really passionate about it. He'd often reminisce about all the time he spent learning it. And what he did for us, he, he kind of showed us how learning ancient Greek, it was like we were opening ourselves up to this whole new world of stories and philosophy and all this good stuff. And also, he knew how to appeal to our egos, okay? He, he kind of made us feel like this special group of students who are really hard workers, who are just kind of like doing something really unique and special. So in all of that, he really motivated us. He really got us excited and open to his teaching about ancient Greek. We really started to learn it. I think something like that is going on here with Jesus' parable. I'm sure you can think of examples of teachers that really motivated you and opened you up to the subject. Well, something like that is happening with Jesus' parables. And the reason I start out with that is because I think that's really crucial as we approach this parable of the sower that he told. This is a parable that's meant to help create change in people, to change their heart, to open up their hearts to Jesus's teachings, and even to Jesus himself. Now, there's a couple things that stand out for me when I think about that, that are creating that kind of change, that, or that hopefully will create that kind of change. Here's the first. The first is who this parable is about in terms of the title and who Jesus kind of focuses in on at first. It, you'll notice in a lot of translations, the title of this parable is that it's the parable of the sower or the parable of the farmer. It, it's not the parable of the seeds. It's not the parable of the soil. That's traditionally what this is called. And actually, Jesus seems to call it that in, you can check out in verse 18. He, he seems to call it that himself. Now, notice then that farmer and what's going on there. That, that farmer is a very generous farmer, I'd say, right? The farmer is spreading those seeds quite liberally. He's not being stingy at all. Like this seems like a farmer who doesn't seem to have a lot of concern about where the seeds are going to land. If this was a stingy farmer who's being extra careful about that sort of thing, we'd think that we'd hear this story. It'd be about a farmer who's really carefully making sure that the seeds go in the good soil. But that's not, who this, that's not what the farmer's like. No, the farmer is generously throwing the seeds everywhere. And so if the farmer is Jesus, if the farmer is God, and so it's meant to be giving us insight into God and God's heart and God's love for us, that's pretty powerful. This shows that God generously wants everybody to hear the good news of the kingdom. He wants everybody to hear about the kingdom. Jesus wants his message to go out to the whole world, to all of humanity. That to me is beautiful. That does a lot when we realize that, I think, to open up our hearts to God knowing that God's gracious, knowing that God's generous. If this was a story about the stingy farmer, it wouldn't really be opening up our hearts in the same way. But this motivates us to do that and also to give, uh, bring, kind of be open to the possibility of loving God. So that's the first thing that I wanted to point out. The second thing in terms of motivation that I wanted to point out is what's going on with the different types of soil and what I think that's meant to do for us. I think there's a warning going on. There's a motivational aspect to that. Now, as you know, the different types of soil stands for different types of people and kind of their heart condition. And the seed, well, that stands for the word of the kingdom, the logos of the kingdom, or as it's translated, the news or the message of the kingdom. 
So that in a nutshell, the message of the kingdom, it's that the kingdom is coming, the long-awaited kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of joy, of justice, of fairness, of goodness, of, of love, of peace. God's kingdom is coming. And that means that it's doing away with evil and injustice and hate and all the opposites of those words. And here's the crucial thing. It's coming in and through the person of Jesus because Jesus turns out that he is the Lord, the king of God's kingdom. That's the word that's going out to everybody in a nutshell. And as I said, the soil stands for different types of people in terms of their character, their heart condition, and so their openness and their response to that word. Well, for the longest time, when I read this, I kind of read it as a pronouncement. It's as if, I read it as if Jesus was kind of just stating the sad reality of the situation. It's as if he was saying, you know, the sad reality is I'm going to be proclaiming this word of the kingdom and people are going to have different responses to it because some people are going to be closed off. Some people are just, you know, too concerned about money or some people are just kind of, too wrapped up in emotion. They don't have the perseverance. So the sad fact, sad fact of the matter is there's going to be a lot of people who just, matter of fact, reject the message or give up on the message. But then there's going to be the lucky few who are the good soil, who are ready for it, who follow it through, who follow Jesus and produce that harvest. That was kind of the way that I used to read it. But the more that I've thought about it, especially in light of the purpose of parables, I don't think that really makes sense. Because why would Jesus waste his time telling everybody? Why would this be a story about a farmer who's spreading seed to, every, to everywhere? Unless there was hope for change. You know what I mean? If it was just, you know, Jesus, like if, if it was just about the fact of the matter and only certain people would respond, and that's just the facts, then all Jesus would have to do would be, you know, pray to God, help me to have insight to find out who's going to receive this, and then I'll just talk to them. And the story would be about a farmer who's just sowing the seed. He'd be that stingy farmer who's just sowing the seed into the soil that's good. But no, Jesus is telling this to everyone. And if you couple that with the idea that these parables, they're, they're meant to intrigue, to create curiosity, even to provoke using all that stuff to kind of motivate people, to, to create an openness to the message, then I think this parable is about hope for change in people. Jesus is telling this in the hopes that people will, will change and be ready and open themselves to the news of the kingdom. You know, I get that. I taught guitar for a number of years. And so that comes to mind for me. Like the thing about teaching guitar is that you have to learn how to motivate people. You know that there's certain things that they got to learn. You know, you know that they need to learn proper technique. You know that it's going to be really helpful if they learn their scales, if they learn how to read music, if they learn a lot about music theory. But all of that stuff, if they're not motivated to learn it, it's going to be like talking to a wall. So you got to find ways to get them excited about it. And so what I would do is I'd give them a lot of opportunities to learn their favorite songs, you know, learn that latest tune that, they, that they're all excited about. So then they get an idea for how fun playing the guitar can be, the possibilities. I also would encourage them to join a band or join the school band just or jam with a friend. Like you just got to get out and play, you know, or I'd try and create opportunities. We do music camps in the summer. All of that was designed to help create a motivation, you know, an excitement, which is a really, at the end of the day, that creates an openness to learning those tools that are going to be so important for them changing and becoming a better guitarist. That's the way I kind of see this parable functioning for people. It's designed to get people thinking, to get people thinking to themselves, oh man, you know what? Like, I don't want to be that, that hard path that just rejects the message. Or I don't want to be that rocky soil that is just caught up in emotion and doesn't persevere. Or I don't want to be that, that soil with all the weeds in it that cares too much about the, the worries of this life, as Jesus says. No, I want to be that soil that produces a harvest. And if that's the, the, what someone is going through, 
You can imagine that's creating that openness because once they get there, then they're ready to say, wait a minute, okay, I want that. And, and Jesus is saying, he can help me get there. So then they're saying, okay, Jesus, please show me the next steps. Show me how I can change. And in that, their heart is now opening to Jesus and to the kingdom. So I think that something like that is what this parable is all about. It's designed to do that. So just to, to review that, to, to finish off today, that's where I'm thinking. I think the parable of the sower, it stands both as an encouragement and as a warning. In, in, in the sense of a warning, it's, I think, really a call to reflection and to self-awareness. Because here's the thing, I think this parable is for all of us. It's not just for people who are first hearing about Jesus. It's about people at any stage of the journey with Jesus. It's a call for all of us to allow the Spirit to call us out on maybe the things that might be happening in our hearts that are preventing us from taking, you know, next steps to producing that harvest in our lives. So it's, a, it's giving the Spirit the opportunity to tell us when our heart's starting to harden, like that hard path, or to tell us when the rocks are starting to come in, or to tell us when the weeds are starting to come in, so that we can bring ourselves and say, yeah, you know what, I just want to, I want your help to get rid of that, to get me back to that place of being good soil again. So it's a call to that kind of self-reflection and openness to the Spirit. But all the while, this is an encouragement. You know, yes, indeed, this harvest image, there is in, in it, there's kind of like this, this urgency to it, you know, because Jesus says later on that there will be a harvest time. There's going to be a time when, in a way, time is sort of up you know, but only God knows what that looks like and how that happens. And it's, it's all in God's timing and in God's perfect fairness and all of that. So everyone's going to have lots of chances in this, but there is a time limit to it. But the motivation here comes from that this is the parable of the generous sower. This is the parable of a God that tells us about a God who loves us, who is giving us so many opportunities here to, to turn back to Jesus and to open ourselves again. And in that, I think it's a call to encouragement and a, it, it's meant to bring about a, an appreciation for Jesus and a love for God. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that that reflection was a blessing for you, that it kind of brought some further insight into this. But you know what? I'm curious. I wonder what things stand out for you from this. I wonder how this parable was hitting home for you because that's the beauty of parables. They can really hit us in so many different ways depending on where we're at. So I'd love to hear from you on that. Please let me know if there's anything that, that, that really hit you home for you. Um, love to hear from you on that. So now we're going to close off then today, and uh, we're at the end of our service, and I just want to take a moment to pray together. But I also want you to know that we are always wanting to pray for you and even with you. If you would like prayer for something, we'd invite you to email us or, you know, at info at the peer dot church. You can go there um, because we've got a group of people that are regularly praying for you. And if you'd love to be paired up with someone to receive prayer even weekly, we'd love to connect you with one of our prayer, uh, a member of our prayer team. They'd be happy to connect with you in that way. So if you're sensing that you would like prayer and you'd like someone to pray with, please contact us. We would be happy to do that. But now let's finish off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your reminder of God's great love for us. And we also thank you for this, this warning, but it's an encouraging warning to, to help us to open our hearts to you, Jesus, and to your message of the kingdom. And I pray that for each of us, that Holy Spirit, you'd speak to us through this, showing us the things that we need to give over to you so that you can bring us back to that that spot of being good soil and producing a harvest, a harvest of love and 
joy and goodness and all those sorts of things that happen when we are living by your spirit, Lord Jesus, and we are living in a way that's kingdom-minded and when we're following you with our whole heart, Lord Jesus. So I pray for that, and I just pray that all of everyone who's watching this, that there be a sense of togetherness in all this, that you keep showing us how we can connect together more and more. And I thank you that this is a really good first step. So it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, great. It's been great to be together today like this. Look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. Bye.